Okay, so take one good look, guys, because right now you are looking at one of the happiest people alive. Right? Awesome. Awesome. In fact, I may be one of the happiest, so happy that I should be on a magazine cover somewhere um, because I am a transitional character. Now, in college, I wanted to be a female version of Stephen R. Covey. The, um, he is the one who wrote uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. I just wanted to be a female Puerto Rican version of him who spoke Spanish in Puerto Rico, right? And so I, was, um, I went to college to um, study MFHD, which is Marriage, Family, and Human Development. And uh, I got to learn things about our cognitive behavior. And um, one of those things is what is a transitional character. A transitional character is a person who um, stops a tradition or habit that their families have been passing on from generation to generation. Um, one of the things that I, I um, we, although we didn't have any like abuse or anything like that in our family, I kind of cut some habits that our family um, did that, um, that kept us from being truly successful. Stephen R. Covey, he taught me I didn't meet him in person, but I did meet his son, who was actually one of my leaders. Um, and I didn't meet him in person, but he taught me so many great things that have made me the person who I am today. And um, um, before, before I go into the balance, what is important for you to know is that you guys right now are not the same person you were five minutes ago. Why? because you are continually and always learning. You can make decisions and choices that change your behavior and you can actually get to the point that you're like, hey, I'm gonna stop doing what this is, this route is going and I wanna start going this other route because this is gonna make me happier, this is gonna make me more successful and it's gonna be making me successful in the way that I want to be successful. What we're talking about is balance. And before we get to the balance part, we want to talk about success. Before we could define what to balance, what are we going to balance, we're going to define what the success part is. Success is something that will make you happy. You would not want to find success if it makes you unhappy ultimately. So Abe Lincoln, he has one of the best quotes that I love. And it's like, most people are about as happy as they make their minds to be. So you have the choice, happiness, and success is a choice for you guys, for us too. One day I came home from work, I was pregnant and I was working 12 hour days and very tired and I came in and he had been home already and looked very, very proud of himself. And Danny had done the dishes. We were not married, maybe, uh, maybe a year, maybe. You were pregnant, so yeah. we had a baby 10 months later. So oh, so not even a year. Not even, probably six or seven months. And I noticed that there was a washcloth, the dish rag had been squished up sitting on the, on the counter. And I commented on the dish rag instead of the clean dishes. And that was a lesson learned because he brought up, he said, you're noticing the dish rag and not the dishes. So it was, it was a good lesson learned early. And I never, ever have ever made a mistake ever since then. That's true. <laughs> she has never made a mistake since then. Okay, so I should have introduced them. They are um, our good, awesome friends, Lori and Danny. And uh, Josh and I had an opportunity a couple years ago to interview people who have been married for 30 plus years. And these are people that we love, that we feel that they were, they had amazing, happy marriages. And we, um, we actually interviewed a, a series of couples and we learned so much from this, from this uh, project. And um, they were actually talking about what? Who wants to give me a gist of what they were talking about? Perspective. Perspective. I love that. So you choose what to see. I can see the clean dishes or I can see the dirty dish rag. And thankfully for Lori and Denny's perspective, um, for their marriage, she learned that really early on, and as you knew, she never made that mistake ever again. Okay, so the balance. 
So when you want to balance yourself and you want to balance your happiness, you have four compartments um, in your body. This is what Stephen R. Covey teaches in his um, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Um, and I'm not sponsored or anything like that. Just wanted to let you know. But there are four uh, parts of your, your life, uh, your areas of life. Body, mind, hearts, and spirits. And they're all connected to each other. They all touch each other one way or another. And we have to be able to balance ourselves so that we can be able to or feed each and every one of these areas so that we can be balanced. Um, let's start with the body. The body is the physical energy of capacity to do things. So we want to take care of our body by exercising, by eating healthy. This was delicious food, by the way. They deserve a round of applause. <clears throat> Very healthy, and I love that they announced that it was gluten-free in the beginning, too. Or part of it was gluten-free and what was gluten-free and what was not. Um, and we want to just be able to just be energized, and um, we want to also be able to rest. This is something that a lot of wedding professionals that I talk to don't get to do. They say, oh, I barely got four, four hours last night. I don't know how we could function like that. We can't function as a society or as an industry with sleeping on four hours a night on average. Um, let's go to mind. I'm going to talk about these things in a little bit more in depth. Um, but right now we're going to move on to mind. The mind is a mental sharpness and the ability to think clearly so that you know that you're doing when you're doing things. Okay? You want to continue educating yourself. You want to continue learning. You want to continue reading, writing, writing in your journal whatnot, all of that fun stuff, that really um, helps your mind. And your heart, this is my favorite one because it's, I think I, if I'm unbalanced, I probably have a little bit too much of this one because I really, I think this is a Puerto Ricanism or at least my familyism, a Mojicaism, because we are lovey-dovey people. If you come up to me, I do not shake your hand, I will hug you. And that is something that is just built into my DNA, I think. Um, and it's pretty much doing something what was called the, um, the emotional bank account. And I want to explain that to you a bit in a minute, I promise. And the spirit. So the spirit is the inner self that exists beneath your core values. So pretty much it's the core values. It's the, re uh, the religion you, you choose to follow, your deepest conviction. And you need to know your values and value your values. That is so important. So when you come up and somebody, a new client inquiry comes in and say, hey, do you want to work this and this and this and this and this, and you don't do half of those things, you're cheating yourself if you say, sure, I'll go ahead and do that. And you're like, dread, I have to do this now. You don't have to do this. If it, if it breaks your values, you can say no. My husband and I actually turned down a wedding in India, India, because it didn't follow our core values. And I was happy for that. A lot of people would be like, are you crazy? Are you insane? No, because I value my values that much. And so should you. You value your values, not my values, because they are valuable. Anyway. Okay, <laughs> so I have a story for you. So this is a story of this young prospector that decided in, uh, well, found out about the, the gold rush in 1849, and he heard that in California, there was so much gold that you can barely carry the, the gold nuggets. So what he did was he sold all of his belongings and he traveled all the way to California. And then when he got there, he started prospecting for gold but he couldn't find anything. He just found a bunch of rocks and more rocks and more rocks and more rocks. Then came this older prospector and he was um, checking out this guy's pile of rocks and he said, well, you got a good pile of rocks there, boy. And he's like, yeah, but there's no gold here. That's, I just wasting, I'm just wasting my time and I'm just gonna go home. And so he decided, he said, but of course there's gold. You just have to know where to look for it. So he grabbed one of the rocks from his pile and he cracked it open and he said, what do you see here? And he says, oh, those are just flecks of gold. I want to, I want the amount of gold that are on your pouch right there. Like, that's what I want. And the older prospector, he said, come check this out. And then he shows him his pouches of gold 
were filled with flecks of gold. And he said, son, it seems to me that you are so busy looking for the large nuggets that you're missing, filling your pouch with these precious flecks of gold. The patient accumulation of these little flecks has brought me great wealth. Okay, so what are your flecks of gold, guys? Go ahead, tell me. Sorry? Friends? Family? Time? Oh, time is a big one. Family and friends. Time? Naps. Naps. That, feel, that protects your body. What else? Pets. Our pets do help us too. Okay. Travel? Okay. So those are things that you are going to add to your balance. Those are things that you're going to add success to your life. Um, I'm going to paraphrase this because I don't have a slide of it, but it, I need to say this right now. Um, David R. McKay, he said, um, there is no success higher, or oh, I'm going to slaughter this. There is no better success than the success within the walls of your home. So if you are successful in your business, in your career, but you are not successful at home, are you really successful? Think about that. Now, another thing is think of your life, you are in stages. Right now I'm in the stage that I have a 12-year-old son. Rewind my life a few years back, he was a, a toddler, okay, more than a few years back. Once he was a toddler and I would not go to India because my son was more important to me. I would not go to India because I do not work on Sundays. Are your flecks of gold something that protect you? Or is it just something because everybody else is doing it online? Okay. For the four areas of life. We're going to go more in depth. And these are actually my, my four areas of life. Um, so the body, this is actually the center one right here, is actually um, what my Garmin has told me that I sleep last week. I average seven hours and 40 minutes a week. That is pretty good. Oh, a night. Sorry, not a week. A night. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so my exercise is a little non-traditional. Like, um, like I mentioned, everybody has a stage in time. Um, a few years ago, I did have a gym membership, and I actually went pretty regularly with a friend of mine. But right now, my stage of life is actually nurturing my son, my son's affection, and my husband's affection. So what I do, this may look a little ridiculous, and please laugh if you can, <laughs> um, is if when they leave, they leave uh, to go to work and go to school. My husband leaves and he goes, uh, he drives away and I'm jogging at the garage door. Please laugh. <laughs> so this is me jogging, just I'm with sweats and everything and I wave goodbye. That's how he leaves. And I don't stop jogging until he turns the bend. And then my son, when he leaves to go to school, he also, I am also jogging in the porch. I don't care what his kids say in the bus, I'm pretty sure they tease him, but you know, that's okay. Um, and I jog, I literally jog, sometimes I'm doing squats, sometimes I'm doing, well, I don't do the up rings unless I'm downloading something or uploading something on my computer. I do have five pound dumbbells on my computer so that I could do that while I'm uploading things. Um, and that is my exercise for the day. And you can't see my arms right now, but I promise you there is, they are at least five pounds lighter now, <laughs> which is a really good thing. And I feel that I am doing it because I'm fitting it into my current schedule. It may feel sound ridiculous, but when I wave goodbye to my son and my husband every morning, that is building what we're going to be talking about in the next slide. The emotional bank account. As you say something nice, as you compliment, as you are kind to them, as you are friendly to them, as you are um, telling them good things and positive things about them, 
you are adding to their emotional bank account. But if that bank account is empty and you start missing deadlines, getting to places late, and breaking promises, that kind of breaks that trust. So the emotional bank account is essentially that you are adding more rather than taking from. You don't want to drain them from the emotional, the, fa the friendliness of, of that. And um, you want to be able to smile whenever people see you. And you want people to, see, to smile at you, essentially, when, when they see you. So these are just traits from the emotional bank account. This is the time for you to take a, a picture if you wanted to take a picture of it. But there's just think of positive as positive, negative as negative. You're doing withdrawals if you are being negative, And you're adding positivity if you are being positive. And so Josh and my husband, they are my number one and two emotional bank account guys. Why? Because I kind of love them and I live with them. And I, it doesn't matter how many times I run late to something and Josh is like ready in like two seconds and I'm like still getting ready and whatnot. And he's like, he knows that I'm just dawdling. But I've added so much emotional bank account, we don't even argue that much anymore. I say, I'm going to repeat that. We do not argue that much anymore. That's how important and how, how uh, great this emotional bank account is. If you see yourself as adding more love to that person, to that individual you care about, that will make you successful in your family and in your life. So I have to, because... Um, because I can. My husband um, did something really cool for one of our couples. This is a uh, bride, and you see this beautiful anklet on her, on her ankle? Um, she was wearing it um, on the day that she got married, and uh, for Indian weddings, for those who don't shoot Indian weddings or who don't participate in Indian weddings, they're multiple days long. And in this case, um, it was a two-day wedding, or three-day wedding, I believe, and um, Nikki, she really wanted to go to this lake and then at the late, um, this pier right here, she really wanted to go to that pier later on so she could like splash her feet, really romantic and really cute and be all cutesy witsy with her husband and lovey-dovey. And then um, what happens is she, dry, she drops her anklet in, her, in the lake when, she, when, she, when they start taking it off. And so my husband, as you can see here, uh, Josh just decides to go into the lake. It was the last thing of the day. Um, so he decides, you know, I just emptied my pockets. He did this all quietly. He didn't, like, blow a trumpet in front of him or anything like that. He just walked quietly, walks into the lake. He estimates where it fell. He goes in. And then they notice, and they're like, no, 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 no. And I was in shock, too, because I'm, like, seeing my husband going into the lake. And I was just like holy cow, this is really happening. He's actually going into the lake on, during a shoot. And then, um, so the water was a little deep, and he actually even took off the kurta, which is the top, and he dives into the water. This is actually him under the water. You can't see him and he, there, and he comes up with a bunch of sticks and a bunch of clams and a bunch of dirt and muck, and then ultimately... The fifth time he goes down, he finds the anklet, and he gives it to them. He has it right there. And did he not add emotion to the emotional bank account? He did. He's a photographer. I'm a photographer. What do we have to do with finding anklets in the bottom of the ocean? It means a lot. You are not just caterers. You are not just wedding planners. You are not just florists. You are human beings, and, you, and we need to find ways to make our job more successful, a.k.a. balance it out in our lives so that we can enjoy it, so that every day we could come to work, go to work happy, and so that we could feel that we're doing something worthwhile. Mind. In my case, I like to refresh in my photography skills. I'm actually painting. Um, I painted that little um, paint right there. 
And the coolest thing about it is my teacher, she's 90 years old, guys. I absolutely love that woman. She is so cool. She, is, she doesn't just teach me painting. She teaches me about life. I love hanging out with old people. I shouldn't say old people, but I, I love people who are at least a generation or two older than me. And I love hanging out with them because I love listening to them and their stories and their experiences. They are awesome. And I love gardening because it adds to my, um, to my patience because you can't just plant a seed and then have a tomato plant in two days. It takes patience. Um, anything that would add um, time to ponder, time to think, time to evaluate your life as you are doing it, that is a great trait to have. I want to not pause here, but I want to remind, remember, remind you, remember how I mentioned that all of the, the four areas of your life, they intermingle with each other? This can also easily be mind and spirit because it adds to your values as it adds to your, um, it also adds to your health because you're feeding yourself healthy habits. Um, the more you intermingle things, the more it works. And also, we're going to talk about multitasking really quick. And the multitasking aspect is, is multitasking doesn't really exist. Um, you can't um, hop and walk at the same time. You could try it. It will not look pleasant. You will fail at at least one of them, maybe at both. You can dual task, however, which is doing something physical plus doing something emotional or mental. Like you could listen to a podcast while you're exercising, which I do a lot. I listen to a lot of general conference or conference talks uh, when I am exercising, when I'm doing planks or when I'm doing anything that is physical. When I'm folding laundry, yes, I do my own laundry. And I do, well, actually, I don't do my dishes because I taught my son to do the dishes so he could do it for us. Um, although Josh does do them quite often, too. Um, but it's important for us to know that if we want to do a task, remember, they are one with something else. One area of your body with another area of your, of your, of your life. You can't do two physical things at the same time. So when you're planning, you could plan on that. So spirit. I love journal writing. I have, I've had a journal for the past, oh gosh, since 2001, maybe 2000, maybe 1999 or something like that. So I have a lot of journals. I have, I don't have books. I have journals in my library filled with my stories, my persona, from things that I did and I could review and why, do I, why would you look for a journal? Why would you need a journal? So that you could see who you were back in the day, and then you could see how far you've gone, how much more balanced you are, how stressful your life was when you were in that moment five years ago, and you were like, oh, this is the worst thing ever. But then you're like thinking, oh my goodness, that wasn't anything. That wasn't an issue. Why was I freaking out so much? Why was that such a big heartache for me at the time? And you could see how much you've grown. For me, I like to count the good. And this right here is my, gra my grandmother. At the time, she was 98 years old. And because of this picture, I am a photographer today. Um, I love the scriptures. I love journals. I love genealogy. And that right here is the same woman when she got married to my wonderful grandfather. I love to worship. Um, and he teaches me everything that I know. So again, I mentioned that I, I don't shoot on Sundays. I don't even check my text messages on Sundays if they think it comes from a client. I don't check my emails on Sundays. I am that devoted to my values. And that's what everybody should do. It doesn't have to be Sunday. 
Sunday, I choose Sunday because that's my Sabbath day, and I decide to rest on that day and, and worship and be with my family, be with my friends. And, um, but choose a week, choose a day. I don't know how people can do it seven days a week. That is just a lot. And so how do we do, we do all this stuff? Go back to your golden flakes or flecks of gold. I did write flakes there, sorry. <laughs> go, go back to the golden flecks. What are your golden flecks? How do you want to balance yourself? Choose first what your golden flecks are and then you know how to balance them out. You can start with a checklist. I start with a checklist because eventually I will become the person I want to become. Like for example, I feel that we could all agree on this one and I hope we can all agree on this one. Your mom and dad trained you to brush your teeth on a daily basis, so you don't really have to put brush my teeth on your checklist because you became a toothbrusher. Now, once you become more adept, if you wanted to, like, okay, I want to pray on my knees every day or I want to uh, reach out to somebody every week, I want to call my dad every week because he's in Puerto Rico and I want to make sure he's okay or every day, you know, that, if you want to put that on your checklist, you do that until you know that you are good at it, that you are doing it without having to check on your checklist. I actually have uh, Evernote. In the Evernote, we, um, it's an app that I have on my phone and you can use whatever app works for you. But I use Evernote and I actually have this checklist. This is my current week today, I mean this week. And I check things off as they go. And um, I don't know if you saw when I was passing these out to you, but there, in each table there is a sheet that has um, this little quadrant right here. You could grab one, um, pass it around in your table if you want one. It could be something that you could use to help balance your day out. Just write down. Um, you could write them now, you could write them later on when you, and you have your spare time and you want to focus on your values and whatnot. In this area, um, it doesn't have to be in any order, but what I do is I write down my values, I write down the things that I need to get done that week in the area of, um, of body, heart, mind, and spirit. And then afterwards, as you, could, I used, you saw on my Evernote, um, I would actually write down on Thursday, I'm going to start working on my taxes. Sorry guys, I reminded you about that. On, um, I didn't write Leah when I'm going to do that, but I'm going to do that right after this presentation on Wednesday. And on Monday and Tuesday, I practice for this. On Wednesday, I'm going to present this. And on Tuesday, Thursday, I'm going to tweak my business plan. So now you know what I'm going to do the rest of this week. And I even have an area for my chores, I have an area for my spirit, I have an area for my education, heart, and, and all of these things are just like mine educational and mine recreational. I have it divided in that way. When you want to manage distractions, you can schedule them. If you really need a break, it's okay. Every 25 minutes or every 30 minutes, you can stand up from your desk, stretch, and do something. Uh, so what is success? Just depends on what your golden nuggets are or what your golden flex are in life. And how do you find um, your productivity? You have to, once you have that determined, you schedule it in the way that will make sense for you. And you're not going to find that on anybody else's page or posts. They're based off of you. And um, this is very pixelated, but I did that on purpose. Be not really. <laughs> I didn't do that on purpose. <laughs> um, but this reminds me of the phrase that I wanted to say. You have to choose your love and love your choice. Many people have told me, actually, that they think that Joshua and I never would argue, that we have a perfect marriage. And I could say that that is true for the most part right now. But if you saw us when we were first married, the first year, I didn't even have any brothers, guys. And we struggled. We had arguments. And there were days I was just like, oh, how do you, how, did I make a mistake? Did, did he make a mistake? What, where did we go wrong? No. Arguments, that makes you stronger. When you're poor college students, 
Going through that together makes you stronger. We bind each other to each other because we're the team. It's us against the world. And now we have a stronger marriage because we try to work things out. We have a family council every Sunday. My husband, my son, and I. And we talk about our needs, our, our week, and how can we do things better. And we actually try to do those things. And if Josh has things on his list that he has to do, I try to find out ways, how can I make this easier for you, babe? And when I have to do something, you have no idea. He washed the dishes. He, he, did the, um, he cooked dinner for me all this week because he knew I was going to do this presentation. Because he wanted to support me. And he wanted me to be happy. And that is why I am the happiest woman in this room right now. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Lorraine McCall with Mojica Films, and also her awesome husband, Josh, for being a big support. Thank you, Lorraine.